Okay, in this issue of Book of the Beast, we're going to be talking about mechs and big mechs. Uh, I don't, I'm just going to combine this into one video because I don't think mechs are anywhere near um, worthy of their own video. Uh, but I'm going to talk about them real quickly and why you'd want to take one. Basically, the mech is just an orc. He's got uh, just regular boy stats. Um, he is a character. Uh, and uh, he's a whopping whole 15 points. Why would you want to take a mech? Uh, because he is a character. You can put him in units without characters. You can put him in units with so they have an additional character. Uh, just to add uh, more uh, mob rule options. Get more models in a unit. Uh, it's, they don't take a slot. For every HQ slot you use, you can take a mech. So if you're running like two old four stars, you could take you know four mechs if you wanted to and sprinkle them around. Um, they're just slug a chop on mechs tools, so you can put them inside vehicles. You know, extra mechs for extra repair attempts. Uh, all the standard orc rules. Nothing too exciting about them. Uh, for options, they can't take uh, no watts. They can't take bounce poles, which is kind of disappointing, especially since the new, really cool new plastic mech model has a boss pole on it, but they can't take them. How, how interesting is that? Um, the new plus model doesn't show it here, but it does actually come with a kill saw. That is something you have as an option. You can replace your, your choppa with a kill saw. It's 30 points, makes them really expensive, but and it's only going to be a strength 6, 7 power fist, because this is just a regular boy. Um, uh, but having an extra, but he's still 2d6 armor pin. So throwing him in with some tank busters with a kill saw may not be a bad idea. I don't know how often you'd want to try to take a kill saw because it is a lot of points. Um, so that jumps them out to 45 points if you take the kill saw. Um, so that's definitely something to think about. You know, having an extra power fist in the unit may not be a bad idea just to take an extra power fist. But again, the points may be prohibitive on this. But it is an option. It's a nice option for the mech. And uh, when putting him in a unit, he's just, he kind of runs like the old wolf guard, where you put him in a unit, there's, he becomes part of that unit uh, for the rest of the game. Uh, he can take mech's weapons. So he can take a, like a rocket launcher or something really cheap. Cannot take a boss pole. Uh, very interesting addition to the codex, I have to say. I'm not exactly sure where they will fill in other than putting extra characters in units just to have a character but very very interesting and it's really cool new plastic model especially since if, if you look at the sprues the arms are actually removable so you could actually magnetize the um, kill saw on or the rocket arms or whatever you wanted to and of course you can just take whatever mech you want whatever orc you want turn it into a mech so yeah very interesting i'm not exactly sure what the purpose of this was but you know you can't really complain for 15 points Okay, so let's move over to the big mech. Pretty much identical to the way it was before. The same exact stats, uh, but should basically knob stats. Two wounds, initiative three, three attacks. Leadership eight, so a little extra leadership bonus. Um, comes with all the same warriors, slugger chopper, mix tools, stick bombs, independent character. Um, he has a lot of options though, as big mechs have had before, and pretty much as I said, it's exactly the same as he was before. It was a little bit different. You can take heavy armor. You can take a custom force field or a shock attack gun. Both are 50 points. No. Custom force field is 50. Yeah. Both are 50 points. You can take a kill saw for 30. Um, of course, being a, he can be your warlord. And you can take all the gifts of Gork, all the melee weapons, all the mech weapons. Um, and Orky Walt. No, so you can put them on anything. Um, so... You could actually technically put him KFF on a bike. I don't necessarily know why you'd want to do that, but you could do it. Um, you can give him Mega Armor, of course. Um, and you can give him a Custom Force Field or a Teleport Blaster on if you give him Mega Armor. So you can give him Mega Armor with a KFF, put him in with some Mega Knobs and Mad Dock. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Um, let's see, what does the teleporty blaster do? Let's see here, where is the ranged weapons? Let's go over here. Cannons. Where'd it go? Teleport blaster. 
Range 12 inch, strength 8 AP2, assault 1 blast, teleporta. Teleported any wound to roll of a 6 made with this weapon has instant death, and any roll of 6 um, causes a penetrating hit, regardless of the armor value. So, a roll, uh, that's not too bad. Roll of 6 is an auto pin with an AP2, so that's not too bad. Um, it's only a 12 inch range, and you know, it's, I don't know what, it's kind of an homage to the, the teleporta, teleporta of lore from the War Gasgul campaigns. Um, so it's kind of cool. Not necessarily, you know, all that great, but especially for 25 points. Um, but still, an AP2 small blast uh, is definitely nothing to laugh at. And it doesn't get hot, unlike the uh, all the other custom weapons. So that's not too bad. So again, um, the biggest change, of course, is in the KFF itself, which has gone from all units within six inches get a five plus cover save to all models within six inches get a five up invul save. This is both a nerf and a boost at the same time, depending on what you want to play. For large hordes of infantry, it is a huge nerf because before you put one, you know, one KFF somewhere, conga line out to all the units, so they all got a cover save. And there was so much ignore cover save stuff coming out with Tau and Eldar that the KFF was actually starting to lose some effectiveness, especially in, turn, in, in competitive play where you're going to be facing Tau and Eldar a lot. Uh, so it's kind of a disappointment for that. But when it comes to vehicles, though, um, it's a big boost getting a 5-up invul save. Uh, the difference is that it's very specific in the KFF rules where if you're if he's inside a vehicle the force field does not project it says the vehicle gets a five up invul save instead so if you want to protect multiple vehicles you got to keep him out of the vehicle um, like in a unit of boys and so he can so the reach of the KFF can hit multiple vehicles um, so there's the two two uh, changes to the KFF. The uh, shock attack gun is virtually identical to the way it was before, um, where d you roll 2d6 strength and on doubles, uh, good or bad things could happen, mostly bad things. This is double six, and then it has the vortex roll, which we can look up. Vortex. A weapon with this special rule is a destroyer weapon and uses a blast marker of some sort, blast, large blast, etc. Place the appropriate marker, roll for scatter, and apply damage. For determining wound allocation, always assume the shot is coming from the center of the marker in the same manner as a barrage weapon. The marker for a vortex weapon is not removed from play after damage has been resolved. Leave it in play on the tabletop. The marker is impassable terrain. At the beginning of every subsequent player turn, the marker scatters 2d6, always scatters. If a double is rolled, the marker is removed from play instead. Any unit under the marker's new location is hit. Apply damage as described above. So if you roll the double sixes on the shock attack gun, wow. <laughs> I've actually only ever done it once. Of course, I haven't played the shock attack gun a lot, but I've only ever done it once and proceeded to eliminate an entire Black Templar's command squad just off the board. Um, so now, but now it's a destroyer weapon on the double sixes and it stays on the table and moves around. Um, it doesn't hit anything in, in, on, in the path, it's just in its final location. So if you roll those double sixes, it's very, very potent. Very potent, no doubt about that. Um, so really, the uses for the big mech hasn't changed. Um, he's still your cheapest single model HQ unit if you just want an absolutely bare-bones HQ, just that because you have to have one for 35 points. Um, remember, the mech only counts because you have to have another HQ first. So... If you just want to uh, do that, you can. Uh, but the Big Mech is, is still the same great support unit he's always been. Um, the KFF, as like I said, has its upsides and its downsides. Uh, if you put him in with a large unit of, of infantry, you can. You're going to have to move him closer to the front. He's going to have to be strategically placed to provide the cover where he needs to be uh, against the enemy shooting. Um, but still. Uh, so just a little more careful placement which means you might lose them sooner uh, but that's okay uh, with, if you're using it for the KFF uh, not a lot else to say I guess he's just exactly if you've used a Big Mac before you're going to keep probably going to keep using him um, 
you're going to lose that 5 up uh, cover save, which isn't a, necessarily a bad thing because a lot of times you're going to lose it anyway from other things. And, you know, you can't always take pain boys because basically a pain boy is your new KFF giving you that 5 plus save uh, where you have none other um, where that replacing the, the, the force field. So that's about it for this episode of uh, Book of the Beast, and I'll talk to you guys later.